Sisa Plus review questions. Domain one, threat and vulnerability management part two. Question 11, as a security analyst for your company, you have performed a vulnerability scan of all your company's web servers. The reports indicate that there are several remediations that you need to implement. You need to prioritize the remediations. Which of the following should affect this prioritization the least? The correct answer here is A, vulnerability age. When prioritizing remediation, vulnerability age should affect the prioritization the least. It does not matter how old or new a vulnerability is. A vulnerability is a security concern no matter its age because they are recycled by hackers. Uh, hackers reuse vulnerabilities because some scanners will stop including all plugins or, or feeds for all vulnerabilities. Uh, prioritizing remediations is affected by the criticality of the system affected, the difficulty of the remediation, the severity of the vulnerability, and the exposure of the vulnerability. Question number 12. Which of the following is also referred to as closed or black box testing? The correct answer here is C, zero knowledge test. In a zero knowledge test, the testing team is provided with no knowledge regarding the organization's network. The testing teams can use any means at their disposal to obtain information about the organization's network. And this is also referred to as a uh, closed or black box testing. Question 13, as part of implementing a vulnerability management process for your company, you are currently documenting the business processes. This includes documenting how transactions occur and which systems participate in business transactions, uh, which effect on the vulnerability scanning frequency are you currently documenting? The correct answer here is A, workflow. You are currently documenting workflow as part of determining the vulnerability scanning frequency. This workflow will help provide business constraints. For example, a SQL server that is used for e-commerce transactions in a 24 by 7 environment might be adversely affected by vulnerability scans. However, because of the high risk for this asset, it may be necessary to increase the scan rate. Question uh, 14. As part of the vulnerability management process, you have documented several factors that might affect the vulnerability scanning schedules. Which of the following factors is the least likely to affect them? The correct answer here is SLAs. Service level agreements or SLAs are least likely to affect vulnerability scanning schedules. On the other hand, SLAs are considered an inhibitor to any remediation that an organization may consider based on vulnerability reports. Factors that affect scan schedules include the organization's risk appetite, regulatory requirements including PCI DSS requirements, technical constraints, business constraints, and licensing limitations. Question 15. Recently, your network was attacked, and the attack had the following characteristics. One, it appeared to be directed at your organization specifically. Two, it was carried out over a long period of time. 
uh, three, it appeared to originate from multiple sources, uh, and four, the attack targeted some specific assets. The team is performing threat classification. Which of the following is the best description of this attack? The correct answer here is C, APT. The attack described has all the elements of an advanced persistent threat or APT. An APT is a hacking process that targets a specific entity and is carried out over a long period of time. In most cases, the victim of an APT is a large corporation or government entity. The attacker is usually a group of organized individuals or a hostile government. Question 16. As your company's security analyst, you frequently run vulnerability scans using products from different vendors. You are explaining to a team of analysts the importance of using the CVSS base score and want them to know which calculations help to determine it. Which of the following is not a required calculation? The correct answer here is C, exploitability function. Exploitability function is not a, cal a calculation that is needed to determine the common vulnerability scoring system or CVSS base score. The CVSS base score is based on the calculation of the impact function, the impact score, and the exploitability score. These three calculations uh, use the following six matrix. The axis vector, or AV, the axis complexity, or AC, the authentication, or AU, confidentiality, C, integrity, I, and availability, A. The uh, formula for calculating the impact score is as uh, shown here on the screen. There's also some information that might be important, uh, but it's not necessary to uh, pass the uh, SISA Plus exam. Question 17. Uh, while analyzing the results of the most recent vulnerability scan, uh, Sarah reads the following information about a vulnerability detected on an Apache uh, web server. Um, so there's a lot of information in, in this kind of, this is a, uh, a screenshot from a uh, Nessus vulnerability a scan. Uh, but again, the uh, CVSS base score, um, so again, um, there's a lot of information you can read, like, you know, the remote uh, web server uh, appeared to use a security framework that is effective, blah, blah, the description. Uh, but if you understand this, the CVSS score, right? Um, so first we have here the uh, attack vector, which in this case, it's, it's network. The uh, access complexity is low. The authentication is none. Uh, the confidentiality is partial. Integrity is none. Availability is none. What condition is needed to exploit this vulnerability? The correct answer is A. No special conditions are required. Uh, no special conditions are required to exploit this vulnerability because the access complexity or AC metric is low, which stands uh, L, which stands for low. The AC metric describes the difficulty of exploiting the vulnerability. And as we have uh, uh, stated before, it has three possible values. Uh, high stands for, or H stands for high, and it means that the vulnerability requires special conditions that are hard to find. Uh, M stands for medium, and means the vulnerability requires somewhat special conditions. But L, like in this case, it stands for low, 
and it means that the vulnerability does not require a special condition. Uh, for this metric, age is the best ranking. In other words, uh, you know, at your company, uh, for this metric, you want to be at the age, which is high. Question 18. Which of the following attacks is more likely to only affect mobile devices and not desktop computers? And the answer here is B, QR code-based attacks. Uh, quick response or QR code attacks are more likely to only affect mobile devices and not desktop computers because they uh, require the reading of a QR code, which most desktop computers do not support. Question 19. Uh, Bob is analyzing the results of a vulnerability scan. He examines a vulnerability detected on one of his servers that has a CVSS breakdown as follows. Um, so the uh, attack vector is N for network. The access complexity is H for high. Uh, authentication is M for uh, multiple. Uh, the confidentiality is P for partial. The integrity is N for none and the availability is A for none. Which of the following statement is true about this vulnerability? So the answer here uh, uh, is C, exploiting this vulnerability would require two or more instances of authentication. So as we saw, the authentication um, metric was M, which basically means that uh, the attacker would need to get through two or more authentication mechanisms. Question uh, uh, 20, and the last of this, uh, in this set of questions, um, you have run a Nessus vulnerability scan on several uh, Linux servers. When you receive the scan report, you suspect that there are several false positives on the uh, report. What should you do first? The correct answer here is C. Verify the false positives to ensure that you can eliminate them from the report. You should first verify or validate the false positives to ensure that you can eliminate them from the report. While validation of false positives can be very time consuming, it is a necessary step to ensure that they are not true positives. Once they are verified, you can then configure exceptions for them. All right, so uh, that was uh, part two of domain one, threat and vulnerability uh, management. In the next video, we will uh, go over questions in part three uh, of this same domain.